or on BBC One with some strong language. Welcome to Have I Got News For You, I'm Jo Brand. Uh, in the news this week, in Japan, games designers claim to have created a virtual reality headset which recreates Theresa May's Brexit negotiation experience. <laughs> In London, there are fears that after being released from prison, one of the Hatton Garden robbers has gone back to his old ways. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an awkward moment in a brasserie in Paris when the food comes out before it's properly cooked. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a woman who describes herself as mainly vegan. Me too, if it wasn't for the fish, meat, chicken and dairy. I'd be totally <laughs> vegan. Uh, please, will you welcome Grace Dent. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a comedian who says, I grew up on a farm where you were confronted by horrific things like no broadband. <laughs> Will you please welcome <laughs> Kiri pritchard McLean? <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Grace, uh, take a look at this. Oh, that's Strictly. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic Rabb. And that's the timetable. The passing of time. The big news tonight is there is no news. Yes. Um, <laughs> which you get used to with Brexit. Um, at the beginning of the week, we were all incredibly excited. The deal is going to happen, the deal's going to happen, the deal's mm. going to happen. No, it isn't. <laughs> um, so we, we're waiting now because there's going to be a, an extension to the extension period. I see you as an expert in this. Is there any... I'm a Gove-style expert. <laughs> <laughs> is there a chance that... Is there a chance that we could just keep on leaving for the next 20 years, a little bit like Turkey, who are trying to get in and have been for 20 years? I think that's a really good plan. <laughs> and it's certainly better than anything else on the table. <laughs> <laughs> well, it strikes me that we had a vote in the mid-70s to join the European Union, and then we had a vote two years ago to come out, so that's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we're into extra time. Yeah. <laughs> the decider's coming up. Must be. We don't know when, but I think it is coming. <laughs> Speaking as someone who gets extra time on exams, all that happens is you have a bit longer to sit there and go, why didn't I prepare for this? <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> Are you suggesting the government didn't prepare? <laughs> I'm suggesting they probably have the same kind of learning difficulties that I do. <laughs> <laughs> This is the news that everyone's enjoying Brexit so much, mm. uh, we might extend it until 2022. <laughs> what set Theresa May's alarm bells ringing on Monday? There was a mini rebellion. The pizza plot. Yeah. It's oh. like gunpowder, except with sort of pepperoni. And... <laughs> they got together and they ordered pizza and talked about her. Ooh. Ooh. Well, actually, the, the sun were almost as good as you at explaining it. Let's, <laughs> let's just... Um, they revealed it was called the pizza plot because of the food <laughs> they eat when they plot. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite helpful, isn't it? Um, who's in the pizza plot, then? Do we know? It's all the extreme Brexiteers. Indeed. So that includes uh, Sajid Javid, uh, Esther McVeigh and Penny Morden. She likes a stuffed crust. And, um... <laughs> Thin and crispy. Or, or well... Jacob Rees-Mogg, as he's known. <laughs> 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 and also, an excited source told the Mail on Sunday... What was the source? <laughs> hey! Uh... <laughs> 
ever thought about doing stand-up? No. <laughs> Just as well. <laughs> anyway, um, no, listen, they, uh, an excited source told the Mail on Sunday, we have managed to keep it very secret. <laughs> <laughs> and if we just... Yes! <laughs> there it all is. Not secret at all. I think it sounds cute, doesn't it? It sounds like a sleepover. Like they're all just sat there and one of them spins the bottle. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> what, with Chris Grayling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed he was there. I don't know what transport he took. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did Michael Gove's wife, Sarah Vine, suggest uh, male cabinet ministers should stop doing in order to negotiate a Brexit deal. Let's have a look. She is tenacious. Yeah. She is calm. She just does plough on. I mean, I think it would be quite nice if all the men stopped shouting and screaming and waving their willies around and maybe just gave her a bit of a hand. <laughs> it's obviously a lot more interesting in cabinet than I thought. <laughs> I know what she means. You must have heard Willie waving before. I have heard of it as a phrase. Yes. It was an Olympic yeah. sport until 1930. <laughs> <laughs> Surely there must be a bit of Willie waving inside the private eye offices. <laughs> Do you have any women in there? Sorry? Any women in there? <laughs> okay. he's, in, he's got an office in the middle of Soho, of course he has. <laughs> What are the perks? <laughs> <laughs> the Department of International Trade uh, has been trying to help to reduce the stress of the Brexit negotiations on their staff. How? Foot massage. Yoga. Mindfulness. That is included, but where would this mindfulness In take a spa. place? In a something room. Locked God, padded like cell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a tranquility room. Oh, yes. Okay. What can you do in a tranquility room? Listen to soft panpipe music. <laughs> you can make a mindfulness jar. <laughs> you have to fill a jar with water and put glitter in it. <laughs> Does Gwyneth Paltrow sell one? <laughs> uh, if you can get it up your vagina, she <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> Should we do a psychological experiment on you? I think we should. OK, gonna, yeah. Yes? Yeah, OK. Absolutely. Right, now, I'm going to show you some pictures. Yep. You've got to tell me, do you prefer the top line or the bottom line? Ian. I think I prefer the top line. Okie dokie. The top line is definitely oh. more soothing. Bottom line. Right, Paul. Oh, I say the top line as well, because at least they're finished. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you like the top line, you're a lever. And if you like the bottom line, you're a whinging Ramona, apparently. Excellent. Oh, well, that's, that's what researchers... Shut the critics up. Yeah. <laughs> that's what researchers say at Oxford University. Money well spent, chaps. What is Brexit being used for as an excuse for not doing? Anything that involves forward planning? Kicking somebody out. Oh, yeah. kicking Burke out? Oh. Yeah. They had a, a debate about bullying and right. um, the shocking behaviour that's been going on in Parliament and it all got a bit awkward because he was obviously the speaker and he is one of the people who are accused. It's like this horrible, toxic masculinity mm. culture in Parliament. Who would have thought just a group of public schoolboys would behave badly when they're put together? It's unreal, <laughs> isn't it? Doesn't sound likely to me. <laughs> <laughs> but they still say that um, John Burko can't go because he is absolutely the best man in the country for the job. And the Labour Party is very keen on keeping Burko in, mm -hmm. which is quite embarrassing, mm. because the Tories on the whole would throw him out. But he said he's going to have an extension period, a sort of transition. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, you know, implementation over the next couple of years. <laughs> and he'll be gone by the time most people are dead. I think you need, like, a single mum with, like, a half-hour window who's glad, like, no sleep, and she's right, sit down, shut up, listen to what they've got to say, and she just rattles through it all, and she'd do it all with baby sick on her. It'd be absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to know what uh, Dame Margaret Beckett said? I, wouldn't, I won't sleep tonight unless I do. <laughs> 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 um, she said, Brexit issues trump bad behaviour. Basically summing up a whole two years of news in one sentence. <laughs> there they are. Uh, and in Dame Laura Cox's report, a number of people complain of being shouted at inside the House of Commons and told, you're fucking useless. I think that's being shouted from outside the House of Commons. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
This is the ongoing Brexit negotiations. At a meeting in Brussels this week, 27 EU leaders enjoyed a dinner lasting two hours. It was awkward when the bill came as they tried to work out who owed what until they realised Britain could just pay for it all. <laughs> <laughs> there was at least some good news for Theresa May. On the 28th of this month, the clocks go back, so she's got a whole extra hour to try and sort out the Irish <laughs> border. <laughs> Now, unless Theresa May compromises on her Brexit plan, the DUP have threatened to bring down the government. I'd have thought the DUP would be in a better mood this week, now that legally they don't have to bake any cakes for homosexuals. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Kiri, take a look at this. Harry and, um, what's her name? Megan. Megan. Uh, <laughs> they're in Australia doing good work and uh, she's uh, handing him some herbs. Sniff it, don't yeah. smoke it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> the most terrifying thing is that the man's been operated by the doll. <laughs> <laughs> That's the terrifying thing about it. So, yes, there's uh, two royal stories there, is it? There's the trip to Australia and there's a, a royal baby. Somebody's having, somebody's having a baby. Oh, they're having a baby. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Absolutely. I always assume if it's people I don't know, it must be the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the wonderful news for royal watchers that Prince Andrew is one more step away from the throne. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how are the royal couple holding up? She's doing amazingly. She shut a car door on her own She's... and everything in her condition. It's wonderful. <laughs> Apparently, one royal source told The Express, Harry is an emotional wreck, but in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> you wait till he has to tell the baby about his two granddads. Um, <laughs> I like it when they do that. Yeah. How did ITV get the inside scoop about the possible sex of the baby? They used an inside scoop. That's a bit off, isn't it? They've guessed the possible sex of the baby <laughs> using Felix the psychic cat. <laughs> How but stupid of us not yeah. to get that. <laughs> let's he has let's... a quite good success rate. He's 50-50 on this kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> let's, have, let's have a look at him and how Felix he manages. Felix the psychic cat. That, that's not Felix, that's Lorraine Kelly. Who <laughs> is it? It's not, he doesn't do impressions as well. <laughs> <laughs> Felix is now going to predict the six of the royal baby. Okay, okay Felix, here we go. can we can we come and can we have a little look, like, Felix? Okay, here we go. This is it going to be is Harry and Meghan going to have a baby girl or a boy? Oh my goodness, it's a girl. It was straight in there. It's a girl. Straight in there. Well there's nothing in the other bowl. <laughs> <laughs> what is the bad news for the newborn? Ninth in line to the oh. throne. Isn't he ahead of Eugenie and Prince Tequila or whatever? <laughs> 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 He's not HRH. That's he's HRT. Right. He's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't understand it, but he's not going to be a royal baby, even though he's seventh in line to the throne. Mm -hmm. It says he or she will merely enjoy the same status as the child of any ordinary child. <laughs> <laughs> like Duke Ellington or the Dukes of Hazard, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this announcement's great news for royal merchandise sellers. Uh, what item unexpectedly sold out this week? Was it the purple folder that she was holding in front of the bump? It was. Yeah. Office oh. supply stores have claimed that Meghan has sent stationary lovers into a <laughs> friend. <laughs> After the purple folders that Meghan was seen carrying to conceal her bump sold out across the world, uh, here she is. She could have covered it with my book, which comes out today. Oh. <laughs> <Ta -da. laughs> so, yes, what's Harry given up to be more supportive to Meghan? The army. No. Is it Ket? Is it what? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what that means? <laughs> well, you don't know what you're talking about, do you, Ian? No, it was MDMA. <laughs> Has he given up drinking? He has indeed. He's not touched a drop for three months, which has led to him seeing less of his friends. Let's go to Australia anyway. How did Australia's Channel 9 today welcome the happy couple down under? Uh, did they have loyal viewers dressed up as kangaroos throwing boomerangs at them? <laughs> Covered in Vegemite? No, because that would have been good. Let's oh. have a look. 
<laughs> that is the Royal Flight. We understand British Ooh. Airways uh, flight coming in, and we can say, safely assume at this point of the morning at 6:05, the Royals have just touched down in <laughs> Sydney. Big round of applause, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's nice, but the only problem is they actually flew in on a Qantas flight. <laughs> <laughs> Meghan chatted with superfan Daphne Dunn, who, according to Meghan, is Prince Harry's favourite Aussie. Bit of a kick in the teeth for Jermaine. <laughs> um, <laughs> Channel 9's Today programme had a question for her after she also met Harry. Let's have a look. Can you ask Daphne what he smelled like? I'm sure. Was it a summer <laughs> breeze? <laughs> I'm not sure this is appropriate, but Carl would like to know what Prince Harry smells like. Oh, quite nice. <laughs> So Prince Harry smells quite nice. Hold the front page. <laughs> um, anyone here smelt Prince Harry? Yes. No. What did he smell like? Vomit, beer and cannabis. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that clears that up. But it could have been me, because it was in the typhoon box. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, while on one of their 75 engagements in 17 days, Harry and Meghan were introduced to two things that were named after them. Do you know what they were? Yes, they had some koalas named yeah. after them. Let's have a look. Oh, there she is. Which I think quite similar to the royal family. They're good for tourism. They're always encouraged to have babies. A lot of chlamydia that no one talks about. <laughs> Very similar. Is that a big problem for koalas? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Really? Yeah, he knows. Mm. <laughs> Personal cost. <laughs> <laughs> well, they told me it was a petting zoo, and I didn't know any different. <laughs> well, this is the very exciting news of Meghan's first child. Talking about the baby, the male's royal expert said he will merely enjoy the same status as the child of any ordinary duke. So it's hard to tell at this stage how universal credit will affect him. <laughs> Guests at Eugenie's wedding included Herb Prince and Herb Prinzessin Ertigen Ertigen and Ertigen Spielberg. I mean, okay. Spielberg was happy to get into that family. <laughs> just to break it up a bit. Well, they had two tables and that was just for the name cards. <laughs> so, <laughs> as you say, no relation to Stephen, uh, no. by the way. How do you know? I've checked it. Yeah. I bet you didn't. I fucking did, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> And that's how Private Eye has edited every fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> a little insight there. A little insight. <laughs> Fly on the wall. Uh, and so to round two, the strengthometer of news. Uh, fingers on buzzers, teams, and here's the first one. <laughs> Can we get an electrician to look at Ian's light? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be working for the last 17 years. Feel like. <laughs> <laughs> this is Daniel Craig, who's got a new baby there, and he's carrying the baby around in I don't know what it's called. Is it called a papoose? Or it a, is. It, it is okay. And this drew the attention of Piers Morgan, who's got a, a birth on this morning now. Um, so he. Uh, in an effort to make himself part of the news, has heavily criticised Daniel Craig for doing something which looks eminently sensible. <laughs> said it emasculated him, though. Was that not the exact word? He said it I don't think the baby yeah. can it reach em... that far, to be honest. <laughs> 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 That's why he's got him up there. He's <laughs> <laughs> no, no mug, Daniel Craig. He's no mug. Should we just look at exactly what he tweeted? Oh, double yeah. seven, not you as well. Um, hashtag papoos. Hashtag emasculated bond. But by bringing the word emasculated in, it meant that lots of men who have used a papoose wanted to say that this made them more masculine, which therefore led to days and days of willy-waving. A lot of people posted pictures of themselves with a papoose. Yes. Have you seen my Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> anyone here carries anyone in a papoose? No. no. Well, well no. not human, no. no. Was it a koala? That's the one! <laughs> <laughs> what is Piers Morgan's acceptable alternative to a papoose? A briefcase. He could have a briefcase. That's manly. Probably... His wife carrying the baby? <laughs> well, apparently it's arms. 
Uh, miming holding a baby, he said, I believe God gave you arms for a reason. <laughs> but what if you're holding your child in your arms you want a fag? <laughs> what you do is you put the fag in the baby's mouth and suck through its ear. Oh. <laughs> give that a go. Give it a go, it's worth it. Now, that's the book I'd like to read, <laughs> Merton's Guide to Child Care. <laughs> <laughs> Now, why have fashion designers Fendi faced some criticism this week? They've done a... Is it a scarf or a coat that looks like... A scarf. scarf yeah. you're being born, is, is the polite way of putting it. Let's just have a look at it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, it reminds me of somebody, but I can't think who it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love the shading on the hair. It's like Noel Edmonds' beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're wondering how to wash it, Gwyneth Paltrow recommends steaming it. <laughs> on its website, Fendi describes itself as a brand famous for scarves and delicate foulards. <laughs> I've never heard it called that before. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Twitter storm in a teacup over Daniel Craig wearing a papoose. Here is 007 with his papoose. James Bond really is a cold bastard. Anything to stop a bullet. <laughs> now, <laughs> um, according to BBC News, Piers Morgan even tried to get Donald Trump on his side. As we know, Donald Trump doesn't condone fathers being that close to their children. <laughs> if they're Mexican, he doesn't even let them in the same cage. <laughs> That's four in a row, you've done that. That's quite bad. <laughs> you want to go for the please. holiday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's the next one. The army's worried that its recruits are too fat. Indeed. They're lucky to have any recruits at all because they outsourced it to Capita, <laughs> um, <laughs> who are meant to recruit people, and they haven't. So all the army have got are some fat people. And that's not very good for the sort of running about sort of bits of the war. <laughs> it helps to have people who can do it a bit faster. They might help in certain circumstances. Say there was a flood, they could all lie down. <laughs> what, well, as sandbags? Help. Yes, that's what I mean. Now, yep. responding to a freedom of information request, the government revealed that one in ten British soldiers are, are obese, which is a total of 18,000 troops. The figures are very concerning, said spokesperson <laughs> for the National Obesity Forum. Mr. Fry. <laughs> what measures are the armed forces taking to reduce the problem? They're giving them like diet plans and things like that, and some of them have been given gastric bands. So now it means that the weight standards are stricter to get in little mix than they are to get in the army. It's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> We've also apparently heard that they've been given Fitbit bracelets. I've actually got a Fitbit. I think they're brilliant because um, I don't like to do more than a hundred steps a day. So <laughs> <they're> really... <laughs> Keeps my exercise <laughs> down. Right. Now, carbs aside, what else has the British military been told to cut down on this week? Booze. It's their use of acronyms. Oh. It's been revealed that the armed forces have a handbook with over 370 pages worth of acronyms. KFC. It's... It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the top one. Yeah. Um, a source told The Times that Defence Minister Stuart Andrew has got fed up with people coming to his office and reeling off a list of letters, which he then has to look up in the book. In the spirit of the MOD's fetish for baffling abbreviations, let's play a little game of WTF does that mean? Yes. OK. First one, what do we think DVD stands for? Digital versatile disc. No. No? Well, in an army context. Oh, they all military. Oh, in an army Yeah, they're all military. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you not want to play anymore? No, I don't. <laughs> Shall I just tell you? Yeah, go on, then. All right, defence vehicle dynamics. Ah, excellent. Next one, Shed. Sarge, here's Emily Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> Special handling and evaluation well, that's attachment. Oh. That sounds exciting, though, doesn't yep. it? I said one good game I like to play Ooh. is I like to text um, teenagers weird abbreviations. Because you know teenagers use, like, lol and all that sort of yeah, thing, that's yeah. quite tedious. <clears throat> I think older people need to have their own. So Ooh. I often text teenagers the ones I've made up. 
like um, CRB. There's a good one. Cystitis really bad. <laughs> <laughs> TLL, ten a lady leaked. Try it. <laughs> This is the news that one in ten servicemen and women are obese. For those related to army personnel, it's the worst fear. A knock at the door to be told by a ranking officer that they're terribly sorry, but your son has been lost in the war against obesity. <laughs> but they will be recommending, though, he be posthumously awarded the Victoria Sponge. <laughs> OK, time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, The Morris Dancer. Oh, hooray. <laughs> yeah, the good news is they can't sneak up on you to sell a copy. <laughs> um, and we start with the history of Morris Dancing by John Forrest is what? It's actually a better read than some other books by celebrities coming out this Christmas. <laughs> It's not worth reading. <laughs> well, that's read. not fun. Turner. <laughs> <laughs> this is from a review in the Morris Dancer that starts, I have included page numbers in case anyone wants to follow up my observations. <laughs> that's the most optimistic sentence I've ever read. <laughs> Next, hunt launched for criminal who what? Hunt launched a criminal who stole a pack of beagles, 12 red coats and a trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those ones where he just did something stupid to a statue. He put googly eyes on a statue. Oh. <laughs> OK. That's a nicer story. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of bust you have in an Airbnb that you know you've been filmed in. And finally, there is no point whatsoever in doing a Google search using the term what? Jacob Rees-Mogg, babe magnet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Google tax. <laughs> <laughs> Morris dancing. Yes. Oh. oh. Uh, this is an article from the Morris Dancer which claims that if you really want to learn more about Morris dancing, then rather than use Google, you should read their publication. Well, it has got more articles than you can shake a stick at. <laughs> <laughs> Final <laughs> scores are Ian and Grace have six, Paul and Kiri all just edged ahead with seven. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, well done. Yeah. And I leave you with the news that after yet another Brexit proposal is blocked by the EU, Theresa May says she's open to ideas from any source. <laughs> In Wandsworth, a dejected resident leaves a planning meeting having been denied permission for a tyre on a rope at the back of his house. <laughs> And in Gloucestershire, as the weather turns colder, the Duchess of Cornwall is thinking about getting a new hat. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. It's back next Friday, same time. Now, Chris Mason has the latest from Westminster and Brussels. Brexit cast from Five Live, available on BBC iPlayer Radio. But actually, I think we should all be worried. Is it true that Rylan was mugged by a fox? Would I lie to you in a moment? You go down to the police station. Right. And you got to say, oh, nothing to do with my dad, it's all me. You will write to me, though, won't you, Dad? Police discovered nearly 